Hello and welcome everybody to my channel Omini Bio Entrance and today we will be discussing National Entrance Screening Test or NEST 2021 <coughs> Session 1 Question Paper I will be discussing only the Biology section If you are new to my channel please do like, share and subscribe Then coming to the first question Similarity between DNA sequences of two eukaryotic species is used to predict their evolutionary relatedness pointing to a shared ancestry. <coughs> Sorry. In an attempt to evaluate this relatedness, a group of researchers sequenced and compared two proteins with the same function from two species. The corresponding DNA and RNA sequence were also compared to decipher their relatedness. Based on this information, the correct option is so first, before uh, explaining divergent evolution, okay, I'll tell you what is divergent evolution. So divergent evolution occurs when two organisms with a common ancestor ends up in two different species. That is called as divergent evolution. Then it is given in the question that similarity between DNA sequences of two eukaryotic species is used to predict evolutionary relatedness pointing to shared ancestry. And in an attempt to evaluate this relatedness, a group of researchers sequenced and compared two proteins with same function from two species. Then their corresponding DNA and RNA sequences were also uh, compared to decipher their relatedness. So they have found that uh, they are um, closely related species. Then... <clears throat> And also they have told that they have to decipher their relatedness. They have compared the protein sequence as well as DNA sequences uh, from and RNA sequences from these species to compare their relatedness. So all these uh, show that the question speaks mostly of divergent evolution, not convergent evolution. So three and four can easily be eliminated because they have told it is convergent evolution. The answer is with divergent evolution. Then divergent evolution has common ancestor and so similar protein, DNA and RNA sequences. So similarity in exons means protein sequences will also be similar. Since proteins are made up of amino acid and the sequence of amino acid is determined by mRNA sequence which is in turn determined by the DNA sequence. So similarity in exons but not necessarily in introns is reflective of divergent evolution. So they, so they have found that there is similarity in exons, that is similarity in the protein. So naturally there will be similar in DNA and RNA sequence also. So, but it is not in the intron, they have found the sequence similarity. So it is in the protein, so proteins are coded from exons. So option one is the answer, that is similarity in exon but not necessarily in introns, is reflective of divergent evolution. Then similarity in protein sequence but not in the corresponding RNA or DNA sequence can be an example of divergent evolution. If there is similarity in protein sequence, there should be similarity in corresponding RNA and DNA sequence for divergent evolution. So this, quest, this uh, option is wrong. Then coming so coming to the next question, the deletion of a segment of mitochondrial DNA specifically in the mature sperm of Mr. P led to infertility. This deletion results in lack of mitochondrial transport protein X critical for ATP production. Mr. P was referred to an assisted reproduction center for several medical possibilities. Based on the information, the correct option is. So we will see the first option that is the somatic cells of the male progeny of Mr. P resulting from in vitro fertilization will inherit defective mitochondria. They have to mitochondria is maternally inher inherited and not paternally. So somatic cells of the male progeny of Mr. P resulting from in vitro fertilization will in not inherit defective mitochondria. Then third option. Treating Mr. P with a compound that stabilizes the defective protein X will restore ATP production and infertility. They have told that uh, it is a lack of mitochondrial transport protein X. 
lack of mitochondrial trans transport protein X critical for ATP production and not they have not mentioned anything regarding defective protein X. Then Mr. P has X-linked genetic disorder and therefore can father a baby only with genetically compatible female. Then it is told in the question that the deletion of a segment of mitochondrial DNA. So they have not mentioned anything regarding X-linked genetic disorder. So X-linked genetic disorder does not come into picture. The next one. In, in an intracyto, that is option 2. Okay, the correct option. An intracytoplasmic sperm injection procedure followed by zygote intrafallopian transfer will help Mr. P father a baby. So intracytoplasmic sperm injection is an assisted reproductive technology and used to treat sperm related infertility problems. Then it is used to enhance the fertilization phase of in vitro fertilization by injecting a single sperm into a mature egg. Then zygote intrafallopian transfer is used for the zygote to implant in the uterus and develop into a fetus. So option 2 is the correct. Then next one. The pathway that determines skin pigmentation in dogs is governed by two unlinked genes that is 1 and 2. While gene 1 determines the type of pigment, gene 2 is responsible for its deposition in skin cells. So allele P that is gene 1 results in black pigment whereas small p produces brown pigment. While allele capital Q that is gene 2 result in the deposition of pigment whereas small q will not allow the same. So alleles capital P and capital Q are dominant over small p and q respectively. Lack of pigment deposition results in an albino phenotype. When two canines with genotype capital P small p capital Q small q are mated, the phenotypic ratios of the offspring would be. So I have given the explanation in my next. So these are the conditions they have laid out. That is capital P is for black pigment, small p is for brown pigment, capital Q is deposition of the pigment and small q will not allow the deposition of pigment. And lack of pigment deposition it is the albino phenotype. Now these are the crosses that is capital P small key, uh, small q capital Q crossed with PPQQ and these are the gametes of each parent. Now here is the Punnett square this is the gametes and this is the possibilities of genotype and phenotype. So from this you can see that there are 9 black, 3 brown and 4 albino. Okay. So the answer here is 9 black, 3 brown and 4 albino. I think the option is 2. Okay. Then, so a leaf infecting fungus secretes a chemical that causes the guard cells to remain open, thereby enabling the fungus to enter the plant tissue through the stomata. The most likely function of this chemical is so importing sodium ions into guard cell, exporting potassium ion out of the guard cell, exporting water molecules out of the guard cell, importing potassium ions into the guard cell. Now since they have mentioned regarding the ions that is sodium and potassium, naturally it is the K plus ion theory for stomatal opening. And stomatal opening and closing is caused by the absorption and removal of water into and from the guard cells it is mainly regulated by concentration of K plus ions. Now opening. So huge amounts of K plus that is opening of guard cells. Okay. Huge amount of K plus ions accumulate in the guard cell which increases the solute potential and this will reduce the water potential. So this causes the water from neighboring cells to enter into the guard cell and they become turgid and swollen. This condition will result in opening of the stomatal pores. So they have asked and in secretes a chemical that causes the guard cell to remain open thereby enabling the fungus to enter the plant tissue to the stomata. So the most likely function of this chemical is. So the fungus that will secrete a chemical that will cause the guard cell to remain open. So what does this chemical do? So for opening of the stomata only they have asked. So it will result in importing of potassium ions into guard cells. So the answer is option 4. The next one. 
three different proteins X, Y and Z that are known to be transported from the cytoplasm into different organelles were studied. Protein X was found to be localized in the matrix of mitochondria, protein Y inside the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum and protein Z in the nucleoplasm. Based on this information, the correct option is how okay they have given how many bilayers that this particular protein have to cross so the endoplasmic reticulum it is composed of one completely continuous membrane bilayer and has a single continuous lumen so the protein that is destined for endoplasmic reticulum that is why it will have to cross only one bilayer now mitochondria mitochondria contain two membra major membranes that is outer mitochondrial membrane fully surrounds the inner membrane with a small intermembrane space in between. The inner membrane surrounds the mitochondrial matrix. So X which is localized to the matrix of mitochondria, it will have to cross two bilayers. Then the nucleus, then coming to the nucleus. So the nucleus is surrounded by two concentric membranes called inner and outer nuclear membrane. And nucleoplasm, it is the fluid inside the nucleus surrounded by the nuclear membrane. So, protein Z, it will also have to cross two bilayers. So, answer is option 1. While X and Z have to cross two bilayers, Y has to cross one bilayer. So, the answer is option 1. The next one, this is a direct question from your books. Okay, first one. Statements about the effect of carbon dioxide concentration, temperature and light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis in C3 and C4 plants are given. Based on the statement, the correct option is at high carbon dioxide concentration, 40 degrees Celsius and saturated light, the photosynthetic rates of C3 and C4 plants are similar. That is correct. Then C4 plants do not reach saturation level even at 10% of the full intensity of sunlight. Yes. Then at twice the level of carbon dioxide concentration, the net photosynthesis in C3 plants is higher than that of C4 plants. So C3 plants, they respond to higher carbon dioxide concentration by showing increased rate of photosynthesis. So, 1, 2 and 3 are correct. The next one. A linear double-stranded DNA was completely digested using either one or two restriction endonucleases. That is CFR101 and BAMH1. The sequence of one of the strand is provided. The restriction site for CFR101 is RCCGGY and for BAMH1 is GRGCYC. Now, R is either A or G and Y is either T or C. So you have got the CFR101 sequence as R, C, C, G, G, Y and BAM H1 sequence as G, R, G, C, Y, C. Now they have given the various digestion, uh, that is digestion with either BAM H1 and C, CFR101 result in three fragments. Then digestion with both CFR101 and BAMH1 generate four fragments. Ba digestion with BAMH1 will generate one fragment and with CFR1 will generate two fragments. So they have given different combination of digestion using these two particular enzymes. So we will go to the next. Yes. So this is the DNA sequence that they have given. And they have told that CFR101 uh, digestion and the number of the sequence which the CFR101 will recognize for digestion. So it is RCCGGY. So here you can see one CCGG. Now R can be either A or G. So A and um, Y can be either T or C. So here it is T. So flanking the CCGG you have got a R and a Y that can be either A or T. So this is the particular sequence which is going to be digested with CFR101. So it will cut over here. Then you have got a similar sequence that is GCCGGC. So flanking the CCGG you have got a G which represent R and then you have got a C which represent Y. So that will also be cut by the CFR101. So it will give rise to three fragments that is 1, 
2 and 3 fragments. Now if you cut the same sequence with BAM H1. So BAM H1 sequence is G, R, G, C, Y, C. Now G. Now R, R can be either A or G. So here you have got a A. Then you have got a G, C and Y. Y can be either T or C. So here you have got a T and here you have got a C. So this sequence will be cut by the BAM H1. And there are no other sequences which will be cut by BAM H1. So BAM H1 cut only once and it will result in two fragments. That is over here one and this is the second fragment two. Now if you cut with both BAM H1 and CFR101 uh, restriction enzymes. So you will get this is the CFR101 sequence recognition sequence. This is the BAM H1 recognition sequence and this is again the CFR101 recognition sequence. So here it will make a cut over here, then over here and then over here. So totally you will get how many fragments? 1, 2, 3 and 4. So a double digestion with CFR101 and BAM H1 will result in 4 fragments. So that is the correct answer. I think the option is 2. The next one. Bacteria can be divided into four groups based on the optimal temperatures under which they grow. Psychrophiles 5 to 20 degrees Celsius, mesophiles 20 to, mesophiles 20 to 40 degrees Celsius, facultative thermophiles 40 to 65 degrees Celsius and thermophiles 60 to 90 degrees Celsius. So based on this information, the option that gives the best match is so thermophiles. Thermophiles are uh, found in deep sea vents. Because thermophiles usually have optimum temperature of 60 to 90 degrees Celsius. So naturally they will be found in deep sea vents. Then mesophiles. Mesophiles they have 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. So they are mostly human pathogen. They have similarity with the human body temperature that is 37 degrees Celsius. So mesophiles will be mostly human pathogens. Then psychrophiles. Psychrophiles cause refrigerated food to spoil. So, psychrophiles grow between 5 to 20 degrees Celsius, that is the temperature near to refrigeration in the refrigerator. So, psychrophiles naturally will cause re registered food, re refrigerated food to spoil. And then you have got facultative thermophiles. So, they have a temperature range of 40 to 65 degrees Celsius. So, they cannot survive pasteurization. That is also correct. So the answer here is option 1. The next one. When a 100 ml of Escherichia coli back uh, culture is grown at 37 degrees Celsius under laboratory conditions, the population of cells exhibit four distinct phases. That is as shown in figure P. That is this is the figure. So there is the lag phase wherein cells adapt to the environment. Then there is the exponential phase wherein cells undergo rapid division and the population keeps doubling. Then there is the stationary phase wherein the rate of cell division decreases and some cells begin to die. Then there is the death phase that is commences that is much before cell lysis wherein the rate of cell death exceeds the rate of cell division. Then the two curves in the graph indicate the method used to measure growth that is turbidity method that is optical density and counting colonies on a solid nutrient medium wherein each live cell grows into an individual colony termed as colony forming unit or CFU. The death phase remains constant in the turbidity method even though the number of live bacteria decreases because so in total they have asked why the death phase remain constant in the turbidity. See here during the death phase there is con uh, it is a constant value in the turbidity method even though the number of live bacteria decreases because so dead bacteria can contribute to optical density but not to CFU because through optical density we can only make a measure of turbidity which includes both live and dead cells. 
So the answer here is dead cells also contribute to the optical density. That is why the death phase remain constant in the turbidity method even though the number of live bacteria decreases because, because they have told that death phase commences uh, wherein the rate of cell death exceeds the rate of cell division. So rate of cell death exceeds the rate of cell division. So these dead cells will also contribute to the optical density. So the turbidity remains constant over there. The death phase remains constant in the turbidity method. Okay. Even though the number of live bacteria decreases. But if you plate them using the CFU for colony forming and count for co and uh, C for colony forming units, then you will find that the number of bacteria has decreased. But the turbidity is remaining constant. So why the turbidity remain constant? Because dead cells contribute to optical density. Then next one. Tetanus is caused by toxin secreted by the bacterium Colostridium tetany. If a person infected with Colostridium tetany manifests early symptoms of tetanus, then the injection which will be immediately effective is. So antibiotic, no. It is early symptom of uh, tetanus. So which will be more immediately effective, antibiotic will take their own time. Then tetanus toxide. Tetanus toxide is a purified preparation of inactivated tetanus toxin. And tetanus toxide is used to prevent tetanus. So it has to be taken at an earlier stage, not after infection. It is like a vaccine. Then tetanus antiserum. Yes, tetanus antiserum is a medication made up of antibodies against the tetanus toxin. And it can be given to neutralize the toxin in the bloodstream. So when the person is infected with colostridium tetany, may infest early symptom of tetanus, then tetanus antiserum because it is having the antibodies against tetanus toxin and it will neutralize the toxin in the bloodstream. So anti tetanus antiserum injection will be immediately effective. So answer is option 3. The next one. The quantities Km and Bmax were measured independently for an enzymatic reaction using enzymes E1, E2, E3 and E4 isolated from four different organisms. For each enzymatic reaction, 0.5 millimolar substrate was used to obtain the product. The correct option in terms of product formation is. So you have got E1 with a Km of 0.2 and Vmax of 500. E2 with a Km of 0.8 and Vmax of 100. E3 with a uh, Km of 0.8 and Vmax 500. And E4 with 0.2 and 100. So we know that <clears throat> Km value it will is inversely proportional to the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So lower the Km value, higher will be the affinity. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So here E1 and E4 are having lower Km value than E2 and E3. So they will have higher affinity for the substrate. And Vmax, it reflects how fast the enzyme can catalyze the reaction. If you see E1 and E4, you can see that E1 is having a higher Vmax value when compared to E2. So Km of E1 is 0.2 which is smaller lower than 0.8 and Vmax is of higher value so out of these three enzymes E1 is better than E2, E3 and E4 so the answer is option 3 then next one deep sea divers are trained to hold their breath under water for an extended period by practicing hyperventilation exercises before they dive the partial pressures of oxygen that's po2 and carbon dioxide pco2 in blood was measured and the results of breath hold exercises are depicted in graph the correct option that best matches column 1 with column 2 so this is the graph here is the start of breath hold this is the time and this is the end of breath hold. You can see that during breath hold the oxygen in the tissues has re reduced or oxygen content decreases and uh, carbon dioxide accumulates in the body. 
so hyperventilation what happens is it reduces the body's carbon dioxide content but does not affect the oxygen content much okay so the red lines that is solid and dotted it represent po2 partial pressure of oxygen these lines represent partial pressure of oxygen so because there is a decrease in the oxygen level then green lines that is solid and dotted they represent partial pressure of carbon dioxide so 2u 1x 2u then colored dotted lines red and green so they represent the hyperventilated state colored dotted lines red that is this and this they result in hyperventilated state because during hyperventilation it does not affect the oxygen content much so these dotted lines will be represented by the hyperventilation state and colored solid lines that is red and green these two they represent the case of normal breathing so the answer is option 1 so next question in the given pedigree circles represent females and uh, squares represent males filled spaces indicate affected individual while unfilled spaces indicate unaffected individuals for the particular disease controlled by the gene p and they have given some Uh, options also like x linked dominant autosomal dominant autosomal recessive the genotype of ip2 is pppp the genotype of this 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 so analyze the inheritance pattern along with the genotype capital p is dominant allele and recessive and small p is recessive allele and choose the correct option so from this you can see that male and female are equally likely to transmit the trait to their children of either sex in particular male to male transmission does not occur so this is the female who is affected she can transmit it either to the male child or to the female child and this uh, male can transmit either to another male child or to a female child so this is not the case of x linked diseases so first option can be it need not be taken into consideration then you can see that this phenotype appears in every generation so every generation you can find the particular disease trait appearing then each affected person has an affected parent so here this is the affected parent and these children have got an affected parent so here also this is the affected parent the children are also having an affected parent only then the trait is been expressed so whenever there is an affected parent the trait is expressed then unaffected family members do not transmit the phenotype to children that is in case of this this portion if you see that they are unaffected and they do not transmit the disease to the children then an affected individual has 50% chance of having an affected child so this is an affected individual and if you see here there is 50% chance of having the affected child similarly this is the affected parent and there is 50% chance of having an affected child then an affected child will have one affected parent so one only one parent is affected the child will also be affected so from these characteristics whatever i told you now you can make out that these are autosomal dominant diseases that is uh, 2 is right autosomal dominant so this is the characteristic of autosomal dominant disorder now you have to check for uh, these two options what are the phenotypes of this particular pedigree analysis so that i have given in the next slide so this is the pedigree analysis that is for the particular genotypes so <clears throat> first you can see that one uh, that is over this one this one is not affected whereas this is affected and i have told you it is autosomal dominant so naturally capital p has to be there to cause the disease small p doesn't cause the disease so since this is affected some of them in the of offsprings are affected and not all are affected so naturally this will have a genotype that is the male will have a genotype small p small p and the female will have a genotype capital p small p so upon crossing you will get these genotypes and uh, upon crossing then again here this second one that is 2 2 this is affected as well as 2 4 is affected 
so they have the genotype which is heterozygous whereas the unaffected individual they are having only homozygous recessive genotypes so the affected individual is transmitting it to its offspring and here also the same way you can find out but here you will not be able to predict the exact genotype because here uh, you don't know because only capital p is present so it will be having uh, the trait it, it, it the p dash i have put over here because it can be capital p capital p or capital p small p that you cannot predict from this particular cross it can be either of the two that is why i have given a dash over here but since p is dominant and that is the autosomal dominant trait that is causing the disorder so it will be naturally those who infect will have the capital p genotype so they have told that the next option they have given is the genotype of 2 2 that is over here 2 2 and 3 5 3 are the same for the trait yes it is capital p small p capital p small p so they are same for the trait that is correct then then another option that is fifth option then fourth option the genotype of i2 that is 1 2 okay 1 2 not i2 1 2 so 1 2 is b p or capital p capital p so it can be only capital p small p because some of the offspring are hetero uh, homozygous recessive condition and they do not express the disease so if that has to be there <coughs> and since the male is homozygous recessive then the female should contribute a, a small p gene to the along with the male small p to form a homozygous recessive individual so the genotype of the female should be capital p small p then genotype of 2 7 2 and 7 over here is the same is capital p small p or capital p capital p since these two individuals they do not give rise to any offspring with the dominant trait autosomal dominant trait you cannot say that this will have capital p genotype in it that is 7 will have capital p genotype in it <coughs> it will be homozygous recessive only so 6 and 7 they will be homozygous recessive because none of the offspring have got the disease so option 6 is also not correct so 1 and uh, so 2 and 5 are the correct options so coming to the next question compared to differentiated cells stem cells have longer interface three different human alveolar cell types that is stem cells normal cells and cancer cells grown under optimal laboratory conditions were examined microscopically the nucleus was stained blue and fos h2ax protein green fos h2ax is found only at damaged dna site in vivo each green dot is considered as an event of dna damage or a cluster of events called foci based on this comparison the result between these three cell types choose the correct options so although carcinogen damage dna cellular process do not lead to such damages if you see stem cell uh, and normal cell nuclei you can see the dna damage because it is uh, this fos h2ax protein is green in color over here one or two you can see that then fos h2ax is found only at damaged dna site in vivo so only if there is a dna damage you can see this particular green color for the fos h2ax protein so that is seen in the case of stem cell nuclei and normal cell nuclei so although carcinogen damage dna cellular processes lead to such damages that is why in stem cells and normal cells you can see the green coloration for fos h2ax protein okay then third option the experiment clearly indicates that the m phase of the three cell type is different they have told only that stem cells have longer interface they have not mentioned anything regarding the m phase so that is also wrong the rate of dna damage is inversely proportional to its occurrence in cancer cell so you can see that what they have mentioned is 
in option 4 the rate of dna damage is inversely proportional to its occurrence that is as the rate of dna damage increases the occurrence in cancer cell is decreasing but from the figure we can see that as the rate of dna damage increases occurrence in cancer cell is more when compared to normal cell nuclei and stem cell nuclei so occurrence of uh, dna damage in cancer cell is more so it is not inversely proportional it should be directly proportional then coming to the second option the rate of cell division can be directly correlated to the number of dna breaks so the rate of cell division that is how how fast the rate of cell division is it can be correlated to the number of dna breaks so that is correct so answer is option 2 then next one escherichia coli strains that is 1 to 4 with mutations in the lac operon were studied for beta galactosidase activity followed by measuring its mrna and protein level that is the shown in the graphs the arrow indicate the time of addition of the compound namely iptg that induces the lac operon based on the results the correct options is or are so this is the level of beta galactosidase mrna this is the activity of beta galactosidase enzyme and these are the levels of beta galactosidase proteins at different times and they have uh, located you know they have drawn for strain 1 2 3 and 4 e coli strains so first option in strain 1 the lac operon is not regulated and the beta galactosidase is inactive in strain 1 the lac operon is not regulated okay this is the strain 1 over here one this line hope you can see it if not you can check the question paper okay so mm. Uh, this is the strain one even if iptg is so here is the addition this arrow mark points to where when iptg is added so strain one even if iptg is added or not beta galactosidase mrna is synthesized that is why you get a straight line from origin and it increases with the time so the level of beta galactosidase protein it increases with the time if you see the graph 3 it increases with time then beta galactosidase activity but beta galactosidase is active as per graph 2 here you can see that in a graph 1 in the plot for e coli strain 1 beta galactosidase activity is also present so if you see the graph 2 so in strain 1 lac operon is not regulated that is correct but and beta galactosidase is inactive it is not inactive it is active if you see the graph 2 so option 1 is not correct then in strain 2 the lac operon is not regulated so where is strain 2 over here this is strain 2 is not regulated and beta galactosidase is inactive okay over here so in strain 2 lac operon is regulated because only after addition of iptg beta galactosidase mrna is synthesized only after this particular bent that is over here iptg is added and after that beta galactosidase mrna is synthesized and as per graph 2 beta galactosidase is inactive because there is no activity of beta galactosidase in strain 2 that is over here so option 2 is also not correct then in strain 4 the lac operon is not regulated strain 4 okay over here these dots blank dots circles small small circles in strain 4 the lac operon is not regulated yes because even if iptg is added or not beta galactosidase mrna is synthesized and it increases with time also so uh, lac operon is not regulated and beta galactosidase protein is not produced even though there is increase in mrna this is the beta galactosidase protein level so four is over here that is parallel to the x axis so nothing is produced so beta galactosidase protein is not produced and the it is beta galactosidase is not active also so this is the option 4 where beta, uh, showing beta galactosidase protein not being synthesized so the answer is option 3 is correct 
then next one in strain 3 uh, over here these colored black dots that is option 3 the LAC operon is regulated yes if you see only after addition of IPTG over here that there is an increase in the mRNA of beta galactosidase the LAC operon is regulated so it is regulated then and beta galactosidase is active so strain 3 this is the beta galactosidase activity beta galactosidase is active after addition of IPTG so um, option 4 is also correct then next one coffee leaf rust is caused by the fungus hemilia vastatrix uh, leucani cilium leucani Leucani, a sporophyte saprophytic fungus is often found on the coffee leaves because it is able to colonize and consume this Hemilia vastratix. In addition, L. leucani infection routinely spreads among Caucus viridus, another pest of coffee. Caucus viridus are often found in large numbers near the nest of Ants. That is Azacta instabilis, which offer protection to Corcus viridis from its predators. In turn, the honeydew secreted from Corcus viridis is utilized as a source of food by the ants. Based on this interaction, choose the correct option. So, an increase in ant population has positive effect on coffee plantation. So, and as ant population increases, it provides protection to caucus where it is and their number also increases so uh, what will happen leucani cilium leucani which infects caucus where it is increases its population this in turn consumes uh, hemilia vastractix which causes coffee leaf rust hence increase in ant population has positive effect on coffee plantation so one is correct and if you see the uh, option 4, that is an increase in as ant population, that is Azecta uh, instabilis number has an indirect negative effect on Hemilia vasatrix. So since I told you that as ant population increases, it provides protection to Caucus viridis and their number increases which in turn, uh, that is uh, Leucani cilium Leucani which infects this Caucus Viridis also increases in population and this in turn consumes Hemilia vastratix which causes coffee leaf rust. So increase in ant population numbers has an indirect negative effect on Hemilia vastratix. So it is an indirect effect, not directly affecting but indirectly it is affecting the number of uh, Hemilia vastratix. So option 4 is also correct. Then option 2. A curative eradication of Hemilia vastratix will decrease the number of Corcus viridis. So when Hemilia vastractic population goes down, Leucanicillium leucani population decreases and thereby increase Corcus viridis population. So it is not decrease, it is increase the number of Corcus viridis population. The next one, infection rate of um, Leucani cilium leucani in Corcus viridis is low because of their scanty numbers except near the nest of ants. Yes, because near the nest of ants, Corcus viridis population will be more. And the Leucani cilium leucani, it infects Corcus viridis. So, option 3 is also correct. The next question. An autosomal dominant muscular dystrophy is caused by decrease in the repeat number of a VNTR present on chromosome 4 of humans. Each repeat is 2.5 kilo base pairs. If the repeat number is 1 to 15, then the individual manifests the disease. However, individuals with repeat number 0 or more than 15 will not manifest the disease. Using southern hybridization technique, a diagnostic test was performed for four individuals P1, P2, P3 and P4 and the results are shown in diagram Y. The schematic X shows VNTR containing region of chromosome 4 
and the position of southern hybridization probe so this is the chromosome 4 this is the position of the southern hybridization probe the probe can hybridize with BNTR and an adjacent 1KB sequence. So the probe can hybridize with BNTR as well as an adjacent 1KB sequence. Based on these results, the individuals that can maintain, manifest this disease is or are. So if you take P1, you can see it is around um, 51KB. It is around 51 kb. So one repeat they have told it has got it is is 2.5 kilo base pairs. So 51 kb will have how many repeats? It will have 51 into 1 divided by 2.5 that will be 20.4. So since the num value is the value of number of repeat is more than 15 it will not manifest the disease. 0 or more than 15 will not manifest the disease. So here it is 20.4. So P1 will not manifest the disease. Now coming to P2. It is 1 kb. So that is 1 by 2.5. So it is equal to 0.4. So 0 or more than 15 will not manifest the disease. So 0 0.4. So no disease in case of P2. In P3 you have got two bands. So one is for... Um, 56 kb so that that will not that will have a pi which is uh, no that will have number of repeats more than 20 20 because for 51 we already got 20.4 so 56 also will have more than uh, 20 so that will not manifest the disease but here that is 26 26 is having how many repeats it is having 10.4 so that will uh, produce the disease. So P3 will also be having manifest the disease. Okay. Then the P4 it is having uh, around 41 KB. So this is 41 KB. So 41 KB means there will be 16.4 uh, repeats. So it is more than 15. So that will not manifest the disease. But this particular the, uh, this one 21 kb that will manifest the disease because it will be approximately near to 8 the repeats will be near to 8 so it will manifest the disease so p3 and uh, p4 will manifest the disease so 2 and 3 options are right so that's it please do like share and subscribe thank you for watching my channel